Members, at this time, the Senate lacks a quorum. We have asked the Sergeant at Arms to call the absent members. The Senate lacks a quorum, and until such time as we have a quorum on the floor, we are unable to proceed with the Senate's business. Members, a, has, a quorum has been established. We are returning to motions and resolutions. Members, if I could have your attention, please. Under motions and resolutions, without objection, the following bills with floor amendments will be deemed read and the amendments adopted. They are item number 104, that's AB 116, Leno. Item 86, AB 118, Leno. Then members, Without objection, members, if I could have your attention, please. Without objection, pursuant to Joint Rule 33.1, Joint Rule 10.5 will be suspended for Assembly Bills 110, 108, 116, 118, 117, 121, and 101. Once again, without objection and pursuant to Joint Rule 33.1, Joint Rule 10.5 will be suspended for those measures. Is there any objection? Seeing and hearing none, the Joint Rule is suspended. Senator Leno, for what purpose do you rise, sir? Mr. President, I move to suspend Rule 29.3 for Assembly Bills 110, 108, 116, 118, 117, 121, and 101, and then to take them up in mock-up form. Members, we have a request from Senator Leno to suspend <coughs> Senate Rule 29.3. Is there any objection? There is. There being an objection, the motion is by Senator Leno to suspend the, the, the Senate Rule 29.3. Members, this is a 21-vote procedural motion. Senator Leno is asking for an aye vote. Senator Dutton is asking for a no vote. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist, aye. Anderson, aye. Berryhill, Blakesley, no. no. Calderon, aye. Canella, Corbett, aye. Correa, De Leon, Desaigne, Dutton, no. Emerson, no. Evans, Fuller, no. Gaines? No. Hancock? Harmon? No. Hernandez? Huff? No. Kehoe? I. LaMalfa? No. Leno? I. Ted Lou? Carol Lou? Lowenthal? Negretta McLeod? I. Padilla? I. Papley? Price? I. Rubio? I. Runner, Smidian, I. Steinberg, Strickland, Vargas, I. Walters, no. no. Wolk, I. Wright, I. Wyland, no. Yee. 
Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Hancock, aye. Anderson, no. no. Berryhill, no. Canella, no. Correa, De Leon, aye. Desaigne, Evans, aye. Hernandez, Ted Lou, Carol Lou, aye. Lowenthal, Pavley, aye. Runner, Steinberg, Strickland, ye. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Correa, Desaigne, Hernandez, aye. Hernandez, aye. Ted Lou, Lowenthal, Runner, Steinberg, Strickland, ye. Ye aye. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Correa, Desaigne, Ted Lou, Lowenthal, Runner, Steinberg, Strickland. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Correa, Desaigne, Ted Lou, Lowenthal, Runner, Steinberg, Strickland. No. Strickland, no. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Correa, Desaigne, Ted Lou, Lowenthal, Runner, Steinberg. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Correa, Desaigne, Ted Lou, Lowenthal, Runner, Steinberg. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Correa, Desaigne, Ted Lou, Lowenthal, Runner, Steinberg. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Correa, Desaigne, Ted Lou, Lowenthal, Runner, Steinberg. Please call the absent members. Correa, Desaigne, Ted Lou, Lowenthal, aye. Lowenthal, aye. Runner, Steinberg. Ayes 21, noes 14. The rule is suspended. Senator Leno? Senator Hancock, one moment, please, Senator Leonard. For what purpose do you rise, Senator um, Hancock? Actually, I need to remove an item from the consent calendar at the request of the author. Um, please, please proceed. File item 147AB709 by Brownlee, removed from the consent file at the consent of the author, I mean, at the request of the author. Without objection, seeing and hearing none, so ordered. Thank you, Senator Hancock. <coughs> Senator Leno, are you prepared to take up one of our budget measures at this time? Yes, I am. What item, Senator Leno? A10, AB117. Mr. Secretary, please read. One moment, Mr. Secretary. Members? Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 117 by the Assembly Committee on Budget, an act relating to criminal justice realignment, making an appropriation, therefore, to take effect immediately, bill related to the budget. One moment, please. Members, could we have your attention, please? We are about to begin the budget debate in principle. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, this is a cleanup bill to our AB 109, which was the public safety trailer bill, and it does the following. It changes the operative date of our public safety realignment, given some of the vagaries of our budget deliberations in the past few weeks, so it changes it from July 1st operative date to October 1st, 2011. Uh, there is that exception for when courts assume specific post-prison supervision responsibilities, and that will become operative July 1st, 2013. Additionally, it excludes, excludes various crimes from the provisions of AB 109 concerning felonies subject to imprisonment in county jail and thus provides that they will continue to be subject to imprisonment in state prison rather than in local jurisdiction. It also removes the division of juvenile justice from realignment altogether and these changes are necessary so that we can demonstrate to the public and our criminal justice partners our intent to make public safety realignment work as it was promised. I ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Mr. Secretary, call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Anderson? Berryhill? No. Blakesley? Calderon? Aye. Canella? No. Corbett? Aye. Correa? De Leon? Aye. Desaigne? Dut Aye. Dutton? No. Emerson? No, Evans. Aye, Fuller. No, Gaines. No, Hancock. Aye, Harmon. No, Hernandez. Aye, Huff. No, Kehoe. Aye, LaMalfa. No, Leno. Aye, Ted Lou. Carol Lou. Aye, Lowenthal. Negretta McLeod. Aye, Padilla. Aye, Pavley. I Price, I Rubio, I Runner, Semidian, I, I Steinberg, I, I Strickland, no, no Vargas, I, I Walters, no, no Wolk, I, I Wright, I, I Wyland, no, no Ye, Ye I, I Runner, no. No. no, Anderson, no. Members, one moment, please. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Blakesley? Correa? Ted Lou? Aye. Aye. Lowenthal? Aye. Aye. Call the absent members. Blakesley? Correa? Ayes 24, noes 14. The bill is passed. Senator Leno, for what purpose do you rise? One. File item 87, AB 121. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 121 by the Assembly Committee on Budget, an act relating to the state budget to, to take effect immediately, Budget Bill. Thank you, Mr. President. This is our trigger trailer bill. And as you are well aware, the Treasurer has deemed the budget to be financeable because there will be triggered cuts should projected revenues fall below one billion of projection and those cuts would be up to 2.5 billion dollars. It requires an updated forecast for the 11-12 revenues by December 15th of this year that uses the higher of the LAO's numbers from November or the Department of Finance's December forecast. And if revenue is lower than the current estimate by $1 billion or more, that triggers the first tier of cuts up to $600 million, including higher education, IHSS, developmental services, and public safety. Should revenues be even lower than that relative to projection, by $2 billion or more, in addition to those cuts I've just mentioned, it would trigger $1.9 billion in additional cuts to K through 12. And this reduction is achieved by eliminating home to school transportation. That's about $248 million of the $1.9 billion and reducing the school year by up to seven days. And that's scored at about $1.5 billion should we have to trigger as a result of that 
revenue falling below projection. I ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Senator Dutton. <laughs> yeah, Mr. President, members, uh, while I uh, applaud the effort to create a, a trigger so that you have something definite that's going to take place, the only concern I've got is in years past, the uh, trigger just never seems to get pulled, even if you have a shortage of revenues. What would probably make more sense, we really ought to have like a trigger off. In other words, the, the, tr the reduction should be made now with the idea that they could be restored, you know, if revenues came in, especially in light of the fact that the revenues that I understand that are being anticipated are, um, may not exactly uh, be realistic. I would uh, suggest as we start going through these, these bills that we need to understand that this uh, – Democrat majority only budget doesn't really address what's going to be necessary to fix the state's chronic budget crisis. Job creation is what it's going to take. Uh, and until we get serious about it, we do something about all the additional heavy burden we're going to be placing on the business community due to our regulatory climate, the elimination of RDAs and, and other things that will be beneficial to helping to create the jobs, I, it just doesn't seem realistic that this increase of revenue is uh, going to actually materialize. Uh, this budget not only lacks regulatory relief that is critical to creating job uh, opportunities, it also lacks the reforms that Californians are demanding and deserve. Californians want a hard spending cap. Uh, the people want pension reform. This is really a this is a hope without change budget is really what this is amounting to. It relies on the hope for billions of phantom dollars and does nothing, absolutely nothing, to change government as usual. Even worse, it's really not doing anything to put people back to work. I would strongly suggest a no vote, not only on this measure, but on the ones that will follow. Further debate or discussion? Further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Leno, you may close. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just to make mention that we're hopeful for the sake of our students and for the sake of the well-being of the state of California that the trigger will not need to be pulled. Uh, we have good confidence that that may be the case given that about nearly 40% of those revenues are already in the door and in the bank. So short of something very dramatic happening on the international fiscal scene, uh, hopefully these revenues and expectedly these revenues will be there. Uh, but for the purposes of keeping this a financeable budget, they are there, they are real, and they will occur should the revenue not be there. Again, I ask for your I vote. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist. Aye. Anderson. No, Berryhill. No, Blakesley. No, Calderon. Aye, Canella. No, Corbett. Aye, Correa. De Leon. Desaunier. Aye, Dutton. No, Emerson. No, Evans. Aye, Fuller. No, Gaines. No, Hancock. Aye, Harmon. No, Hernandez. Aye, Huff. No, Kehoe. I Lamalfa, no, Leno, I Ted Lou, I Carol Lou, I Lowenthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, I Rubio, I Runner, no, Smidian, I, I Steinberg, I, I Strickland, no. no, Vargas, I, I Walters, no, Wolk. I right, I Wyland, no ye, ye no. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Correa, no. De Leon, De Leon, I. Eyes 23, noes 17. The bill is passed.
Senator Leno, for what purpose do you rise, sir? Mr. President, I'd like to present file item 86, which is AB 118. AB 118, file item 86. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 118 by the Assembly Committee on Budget, an act relating to local government finance and making an appropriation, therefore, to take effect immediately, bill related to the budget. Thank you, colleagues. Mr. President, this is our public safety realignment trailer bill. And this is in the governor's proposal and idea that we want to bring government back closer to the people with the concurrent responsibility and authority as well. We are spending extraordinary amounts of money currently on a failed correction system. In fact, since my time in Sacramento from 2003, I've seen, we've seen the percentage of our general fund spent on corrections grow from 5.3% to nearly 11% today. Without significant correction, we could see it, and without reform, we could see it grow to 13, 15% of general fund spending. When we were at 5%, we were at the highest in the nation. This is clearly out of control. The governor has a proposal that will finally bring some reform through realignment that will not only, once fully implemented, in 20, by 2014, lower the budget for the Department of Corrections by a full $2 billion, which is about 20% of their budget. And at the same time, we will get better outcomes. We know that for all the money we're putting into it, the outcomes are not worth the expense. With a recidivism rate twice the national average, 70%, nationwide closer to 35%, we are not keeping our communities safer using evidence-based programs, we know we can do better, and we can provide that better service at the local level. So the bill defines public safety services to be realigned to include child welfare services, substance abuse treatment, mental health services, lower level offenders, adult parole, and various public safety programs and court security. It also establishes an allocation for funding for the Community Corrections Grant Program, which was established by AB 109 uh, of this year uh, for one year. And this funding allocation will be reevaluated re later in the fiscal year. It also establishes an account structure for allocations of realignment funding to various accounts. And it also ensures local public safety programs that were previously supported over the past two years by that 0.15% temporary increase in the vehicle license fee and will be yet funded for purposes of realignment. I ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, will the secretary please call the roll? Alquist? Aye. Aye. Anderson? No. Berryhill? No. Blakesley? No. no. Calderon? Aye. Aye. Canella? No. Corbett? I Correa, De Leon, I Desanye, I Dutton, no Emerson, no Evans, I Fuller, no Gaines, no Hancock, I Harmon, no Hernandez, I Huff, no Kehoe, I Lamalfa, no Leno, I Ted Lou, I Carol Lou, I Lonethal. I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, I Rubio, I Runner, no, Semidian, I Steinberg, I Strickland, no Vargas, I Walters, no Wolk, I Wright, Wyland, no Ye, Ye I. Right, I. Anderson, no. Correa. Ayes 24, noes 15. The bill is passed. Senator Steinberg, we have four items which we anticipated would start in the Senate. Three of those items have been completed. 
We have one item remaining, which I understand is not yet ready to be taken up. There are four items we anticipate arriving from the Assembly for Senate concurrence. The desk informs us that none of those items have arrived at this time. How would you like to proceed, sir? Members, uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, the one bill that, uh, in working out the logistics with the Assembly that is ours to take up is the Education Trailer Bill. It is still at Ledge Council for some last minute tweaks. I'm told that it will be back on the floor by about 8.30. In the meantime, we await uh, the first of four bills coming over from the, from the Assembly, including the main budget bill. And so my suggestion here is that we take a brief on the floor, on the floor, or that we just not take a recess, but just, just uh, wait a few minutes for the, uh, for the first bill to arrive. Thank you.
Members, if we could call the Senate back to order, please. If we could call the Senate back to order. Senator Leno, I'm advised that Senate Bill 87 and Senate Bill 89 have been processed by the Assembly and are now in the possession of the Senate. How do you wish to proceed, sir? Thank you for asking, Mr. President. This is how I would like to proceed. I would like to request unanimous consent to take up file items 87, excuse me, uh, SB 87 and SB 89 without reference to file. The request, members, is that these items be taken out without reference to file. Members, uh, as I look to the Senate desk staff, I believe this simply relieves us of the necessity of creating a supplemental file for this purpose. Mr. Dutton, for what purpose do you rise, sir? Uh, did I understand you're requesting a rule waiver, or you, what was your, your request? I don't think you requested a rule waiver. File. Without reference file? Simply without reference to file. As I say, that obviates the need to create a supplemental file and delay the proceedings further. Senator Leno, if there is no objection, we will proceed on SB 87 and SB 89 without reference to file. Seeing and hearing none, so ordered, we will proceed without reference to file. Do you wish to take up SB 87 first? Then we'll ask the secretary to please read. Senate Bill 87 by Senator Leno, an act making appropriations for the support of the government of the state of California and for several public purposes in accordance with the provisions of section 12 of article four of the constitution of the state of California to take effect immediately budget bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Congress, you may have read in the paper that last week or so, uh, the governor vetoed the budget bill that we passed on June 15th. Uh, in his veto, he suggested that he took issue with a number of our revenue solutions, including the $1.2 billion that we scored for the asset sales, the $1 billion that we scored for use of Prop 10 monies, the $700 million in Medi-Cal federal dollars that we believe the government owes us, also the $540 million that we were going to uh, additionally defer from UC, and then also, of course, the $900 million in the single flip, which was the increase of the sales tax. As a result, uh, the governor then needed approximately $5.2 billion to be able to fill that hole, and he has done so by increasing the revenue scored for the current budget year by $1.2 billion, revenues we've already received, and then increasing revenue projections for the 2011-12 budget by approximately $4 billion. And this is consistent with recent revenue data. And that is the architecture of the budget. We will get into the trailer bills subsequently and have on three of them already. So rather than reiterate all of that in the budget bill, the only other point I would make, uh, though I see that uh, there will be some comments from my Republican colleagues, that with this additional revenue, the point might be suggested that we never needed the tax extensions because clearly we have been able to fund our public safety realignment. We have been able to keep K through 12 whole, at least likely through minimally January, and that again, the tax revenues were never necessary. I would just point out that though we are squeaking by as a result of the good fortune of unexpected revenue, we are still facing $11 billion in maintenance factor to education. On top of that, $9 billion in deferral to education, $20 billion. We have underfunded education, and we owe them at this time. We also, in addition to that $20 billion, a wall of debt of $35 billion, which has accumulated as a result of our collective inability to either make deeper cuts or raise some revenue. And that $35 billion of debt does not go away. 
And if we don't deal with it one way or the other, it is a tax on our kids because we will merely be passing it off to them. This is not projected deficit and debt. It is real debt. We have to deal with it one way or another, and that's why the governor has already made mention that he will pursue revenue on a November 2012 ballot and let the voters decide on this, but that's not our issue tonight. We're just approving the governor's re assessment of what revenues he believed would be an honest balance to this budget, uh, which has been concurred by the treasurer. This is financeable. He can go to market and sell RANDs later this year, as we do every autumn, to uh, keep our cash flow intact. I ask for your I vote. Debate or discussion? Senator Huff. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, the voters gave the legislature majority vote on a budget just last November and true to form we're exercising that well this year. This is our fourth attempt at a majority vote budget. And mind you, what you have before us doesn't reflect Republican input because once again we've been iced out of the project process. So this is really an assembly Democrat and a Senate Democrat and a Democrat governor's budget. But what's happened since January? The governor outlined a $14 billion tax need with a $12 billion worth of cuts. And he called it, you know, equal revenues, equal taxes. The mayor vision showed us $6.6 .6 billion of extra revenue. And even this budget assumes yet another rosy scenario of $5.2 billion on top of that. Well, lo and behold, that's nearly $12 billion more than what was really needed in January, remember we were going to raise taxes an extra couple of billion to backfill Prop 98, but that's another story. It was really about 12 billion of revenue they needed. And so here you are with needing 12 in January with new taxes or extending taxes. We've since scored 12 billion dollars, but we're still calling for taxes. Now you're calling for taxes next year. And you'll go out and you'll poll and you'll find out what kind of taxes that the people would support and you'll probably plug that in. <clears throat> But if we now have the revenue that we needed at the beginning of the year, why is it we keep going back to the voters and asking for yet more? Um, it, these are still difficult times. Our businesses are still trying to recover. Um, and you'll recall that some of the Republicans took up the challenge of the governor that says, give us the opportunity to vote for this. Just you can fight against it if you want, but just let the people decide. And we decided that the people really wanted to decide on some issues other than just extending the taxes they had recently said no to. And so we started the dialogue to put a cap in state spending because we seem to have this propensity to spend more than we come in time after time. And we also asked for a reform in public pensions because the actuaries say even the most conservative, it's about $100 billion underfunded, up to $500 billion underfunded over the next 20 years in actuarial terms. But it's something that absolutely has to get wrestled to the ground or the taxpayers are going to be on the hook for that if we don't deal with it. And we have jobs that we want to create, and yet we have these regulations. We have thousands of pages of regulation, but we don't even know what's there. And so the Republicans put out some regulatory reform and sequel reform to get people back to work. While that didn't result in anything tangible because we came down a road that we're willing to score that to allow the people to decide on taxes as long as they could decide on these other issues. Here we are again, and we're facing none of these reforms. We have no pension reform. We have no spending cap. We have no regulatory reform. We have no secret reform. We have business as usual with a projected tax on the ballot next year. So when do we get serious about getting at the underlying problems that don't let our businesses grow and create the jobs we need to generate the tax revenue that will actually drive the economic engine of the state? When are we going to do that? Wouldn't that be refreshing instead of going back to the well and saying we need just a little bit more tax from the public? It's clear that this bridge tax was never needed because we have scored $12 billion. So what were we doing in this exercise? It's very frustrating, but it's clear that it was just a pick off to not only score this revenue, but to dupe the voters into giving a little bit more tax as well in some special election. I think there's a lot of problems in here. Um, you've heard uh, some others, and you will hear some others speak against this, but I urge your no vote. Further debate or discussion, Senator Walters. Mr. President and members, 
According to the Department of Finance, California's overall debt is now $188 billion. This budget does nothing to reduce this long-term liability. This budget fails to include any of the reforms that the Republicans have been seeking since January, reforms that address our massive unfunded pension liability, and reforms that reduce our regulatory reform so that we can put Cal people back to work and make sure that California businesses thrive in this state. The budget before us is just more of the same, kicking the can down the road so that future generations have to deal with it. Approving a plan with no serious reforms is doing a disservice to the people in the state of California, and I urge a no vote. Further debate or discussion? Further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Leno, you may close. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, I think we all recognize our funding level for education is not where we want to be. We're at around $7,900 per pupil. State of New York is closer to 15,000. How do our kids compete with the kids from New York who are getting appropriately funded education? We rank 50 out of 50 states in the number of kids per librarian, per counselor, per nurse at school. Most schools don't even have school nurses at this point. We have starved our educational system. We know that higher education universities and colleges get further and further out of reach because tuitions keep going up, because those institutions have no opportunity for funding if they, other than tuition increases, if we don't give them general fund support. And the percentage that they are surviving on of general fund is at historic low levels. We are disinvesting in our higher educational system, the very educational system that made this the eighth largest economy in the world. And I do need to comment that yes, we need to clarify this. Voters gave the majority party for the first time in Prop 25 the authority to pass a budget. But one hand is still tied behind the majority party's back because we know balancing a budget is addition and subtraction and the minority party controls all addition. If voters, and this is a conversation we'll be having with voters in the coming months, were to give the majority party authority to match their responsibility, to get the job done, to get the budget passed on time and balanced. For example, if we had that full authority today, we would have passed on June 15th the governor's proposal. Deep cuts of about 11, 12 billion, closer to 14 billion, excuse me, and another 14 billion in revenue. That was the governor's balanced approach. If the simple majority could have passed that, we would have. And if voters were so opposed to the extension of those revenues, every two years there's another election, and going forward in non-gerrymandered districts, in open primaries, no rig system going forward, voters can change who's in the, major, in the majority party. And that's how a democracy works. Let the majority rule. If you don't like what they're doing, just as in the US Congress, the majority party has shifted and can continue to shift. And that is the working of a democracy. So yes, we have the authority to pass the budget, but we don't have the authority to deal with any of the revenue. That is in the hands of minority, and I think we all recognize that. There's no tax increase in this bill before you. I ask for your aye vote. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist? Aye. aye. Anderson? No. no. Berryhill? No. No. Blakesley? No. no. Calderon? Aye. aye. Canella? No. Corbett? Aye. aye. Correa? Aye. No. De Leon? Aye. aye. Desaunier? Aye. Dutton? Aye. No. Emerson? Aye. No. Evans? Aye. aye. Fuller? Aye. No. Gaines? No, Hancock. I, Harmon. No, Hernandez. I, Huff. No, Kehoe. I, LaMalfa. No, Leno. I, Ted Lou. Carol Lou. I, Lowenthal. Negretta McLeod. I, Padilla. I, Pavley. I, Price. I, Rubio. Runner. No, Semidian. I Steinberg, aye. I Strickland, yes. no Vargas, aye. I Walters, aye. no Wolk, aye. I Wright, 
Wyland? No. No. Ye. Ye, no. Desaunier, aye. Aye. Secretary, please call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal, Rubio, Wright. Wright, no. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal, Rubio. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal, Rubio. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal, Rubio. Mr. Secretary, please, please uh, call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal, Rubio. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal, Rubio. Call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal, Rubio. Call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal, Rubio. Rubio, no. Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal. Will all those desiring to vote please vote? Will all those desiring to vote please vote? Mr. Secretary, please call the absent members. Ted Liu, Lowenthal. Senator Steinberg has asked that we place the measure on call. Senator Leno, we have placed SB 87 on call. Do you have another item you'd like to take up at this time? Prepared to take up SB 89. SB 89 without reference to file. Oh, Sec uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yes, that's correct. That's correct. Mr. Secretary, please read. One Se moment, please, Mr. Secretary. Members? We could have quiet in the chambers, please. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 89, by the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Review, and act to vehicles and making an appropriation, therefore, to take effect immediately, bill related to the budget. Thank you, colleagues. Mr. President, uh, this bill will sound very familiar to you. It is our vehicle fees and taxes trailer bill. We've already discussed this, debated it with uh, minor change since the veto. Uh, first of all, you may remember that it reduces the funds a VLF that pay for administration at administrative costs at the DMV by $300 and it shifts that savings to cities and counties to be used for our public safety realignment. Then to fill that $300 million hole, we then have uh, proposed to increase the annual vehicle registration fee, different from the vehicle license fee, of course, uh, this fee pays for the administrative costs at the Department of Motor Vehicles. It would be raised by $12 from a base registration fee of $31 to $43. Uh, it then additionally, and this is the uh, most recent aspect of it, it shifts $153 million in local general purpose VLF to public safety realignment and that uh, VLF shifted for public safety realignment will then total $453 as opposed to the $300 million in the bill, that, the trailer bill that we passed on June 15th. And I ask for your eye vote. Debate or discussion? Senator Emerson. Thank you, Mr. President and members. I rise in opposition to this measure. This is what happens when a major 
uh, it does not go through the committee process and is done behind closed doors. This would sweep approximately $130 million of general fund revenues from the current vehicle license fee formula for a special account beginning in July 1, 2011. This will be especially devastating to four newly incorporated cities in Riverside County. And this may force them to have to disincorporate because they will be missing funds that are vitally important for their continued operations. I ask for a no vote on this measure. Question, further debate or discussion? Senator Correa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Senators, I also rise in opposition to this measure. Let me tell you why this is one of those uh, bills that last minute there was a provision inserted that actually takes $50 million from Orange County. Not too sure why just Orange County is contributing 50, 50 million more. Let me tell you a story here. This $50 million was encumbered when Orange County financed itself out of bankruptcy. And when they refinanced that debt, for some reason, people in Sacramento figured that that 50 million encumbrance that was used to pay for that debt had disappeared. Ladies and gentlemen, Orange County is still paying for that bankruptcy today and taking $50 million just from Orange County is incorrect, and that's why I stand in opposition to this measure. Top of that, let me remind folks that Orange County, when it comes to taxpayer equity, when it comes to property taxes, we're at the bottom of the barrel. We get 10.8 cents per dollar for every dollar of property taxes that we pay, compared to a statewide average of 20 cents. That's why today I stand in opposition to this measure. Further debate or discussion? Senator Huff. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, we heard earlier that this budget contains no taxes, and you should understand that technically it doesn't, but they kind of changed the car tax formula a little bit and massaged it around and circumvented the two-third vote to increase what we call the vehicle license fee by changing some of it and dedicating it for one use and then because they can legally assign a fee to something that there is a service for, they score the rest of it as a fee. Well, that's a little accounting gymnastics, but that's how you circumvent taxes, legal taxes, but you still charge people more money. It looks like a tax, it is a tax. You've heard other reasons why this is a bad bill. I urge your no vote. Senator Dutton. I, uh, <laughs> I was finding it interesting because I know uh, there's been some comments made about the uh, Republican participation and trying to do something in a bipartisan basis. I, so far, the only thing I'm seeing done on a bipartisan basis during this budget process is in the no vote. So I don't know exactly where we're going, but it doesn't seem like if we're looking for bipartisan solutions, we might want to rethink how we're doing this. I would suggest taking money away from especially newly incorporated cities, is not the appropriate way to go about balancing the budget. Further debate or discussion? Is there further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Leno, you may close. Thank you, Mr. President. Just to remind everybody that the VLF shift is to cities and counties. So yes, there is a shift of funds but cities and counties and their public safety programs will benefit as a result. I ask for your aye vote. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Anderson? No. no. Berryhill? No. Blakesley? No. no. Calderon? Aye. aye. Canella? No. no. Corbett? Aye. Correa? No. De Leon? Aye. Desaunier? Aye. aye. Dutton? No. no. Emerson? No, Evans. Aye. Fuller. No, Gaines. No, Hancock. Aye. Harmon. Hernandez. Aye. Huff. No, Kehoe. Aye. LaMalfa. No, Leno. Aye. Ted Lou. Carol Lou. Aye. Lowenthal. Aye. Negretta McLeod. Aye. Padilla. I Pavley, I Price, I Rubio, no. 
Runner? No. no. Semidian? Aye. Aye. Steinberg? Aye. Aye. Strickland? No. no. Vargas? Aye. Aye. Walters? No. no. Wolk? Aye. Wright? Wyland? No. no. Ye? Ye aye? Harmon, no. Secretary, please call the absent members. Ted Lou? Aye. Wright? Secretary, please call the absent members. Right. Eyes 22, noes 17. The amendments are concurred in. Senator Leno, for what purpose do you rise, sir? Yes, I would uh, request unanimous consent to take up SB 92 and SB 73 without reference to file and then first take up SB 73. Members, is there any objection to taking up SB 92 and SB 73 without reference to file? Seeing and hearing none, so ordered. Senator Leno, I understand you'd like to take up SB 73 first. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 73 by the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Review and Act to Health and Human Services, making an appropriation therefore to take effect immediately, bill related to the budget. Colleagues, thank you, Mr. President. This is our Health and Human Services trigger trailer bill. And should projected revenues fall more than a billion short, this would be the first tier of triggered cuts amounting to about $600 million. Specifically, it will direct the Department of Developmental Services to identify an additional $100 million in general fund savings from across the entire developmental services system. So this would include the state administration, the developmental centers, and administration and services provided through the regional center. So the idea is to spread the pain as broadly as possible should that occur. It also directs the Department of Social Services to implement an across-the-board reduction in in-home supportive services of 20% with specified notice requirements. A total of $100 million in general fund savings would be assumed. And then it, then it also implements reductions in the Medi-Cal program through reductions to the program of all-inclusive care for the elderly, otherwise known as PACE, the Senior Care Action Network, and the AIDS Healthcare Fund Foundation. And these reductions pertain to up to 10% provider reimbursement reinduction, Medi-Cal enrollee co-payments for services and related measures enacted in, the Mar in March for Medi-Cal managed care services. This would total about one, uh, excuse me, $15 million in general fund savings. So again, yet additional cuts to a social safety net, which has already been severely tattered. Hopefully these triggers will not have to occur, but should the revenues fall short, they indeed will be. I ask for your I vote. Is there debate or discussion? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Anderson? No. Berryhill? No. Blakesley? No. Calderon? Aye. Canella? No. Corbett? Aye. Correa? De Leon? Aye. Desaunier? Aye. Dutton? No. Emerson? No. Evans? Aye. Fuller? No. Gaines? No. Hancock? Aye. Herman? Hernandez? Aye. Huff? No. Kehoe? Aye. LaMalfa? No. Leno? Aye. Ted Lou? Aye. Carol Lou? Aye. Lowenthal? Aye. Negretta McLeod? Aye. Padilla? Aye. Pavley? Aye. Price? Aye. Rubio? Aye. Runner? No. Semidian? Aye. Steinberg? Aye, Strickland? No. no. Vargas? Aye, Walters? No. Wolk? Aye, Wright? Aye, Wyland? No. Ye? Ye, no. Harmon, no. Correa, no. Yes. 
Ayes 23, noes 17. The amendments are concurred in. Senator Leno, are you prepared to take up SB 92 at this time? Only if the desk is. The desk indicates that we are prepared to take up SB 92. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 92 by the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Review and act to public safety, making appropriation therefore to take effect immediately, bill related to the budget. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, this is our public safety trailer bill. This helps to and enables us to implement our public safety realignment. Senator Leno, one moment, please, while we call the Senate to order. Members, could we direct the attention of the Senate to Senator Leno, please? One moment, please, members. This is a collaborative effort with our local public safety partners so that we can create safer communities, have better outcomes, and save the state significant billions of dollars in the years to come. It establishes the Board of State and Community Corrections, and this board will be comprised of state and local criminal justice stakeholders. The board's mission includes providing leadership, coordination, and research expertise in state and local correction systems. It also cleans up statute related to the California Community Corrections Performance Incentive Act of 2009. That was a bill that I jointly authored with then Senator John Benoit. And I just want to let you know how extraordinarily successful it has been in its just first year of implementation. The idea was that we used $45 million of one-time federal stimulus ARA funds as the startup money to direct to chief probation officers in every county throughout the state. The idea being, with this additional money, they could invest in keeping felony probationers successful in their probation. Felony probationers are those younger offenders, probably first or second time offenders, lower level offenders, who have been sentenced to maybe six to 12 months in county jail, and then some probation time rather than sending them initially to the state prison system. If we could keep them successful in their probation, we would have a win-win-win. We would have safer communities because they wouldn't be committing crime. We would lower our prison population because they would never enter the state system. We would subsequent subsequently save significant money because of that lower population and then continue to share that savings with ongoing investment in the community corrections programs with the chief probation officers that lowered the prison population. A win-win-win. In our first year of implementation, we have kept 4,000 successful felony probationers from entering our state prison system, a savings of $178 million. It worked we got nearly $4 back for every dollar we invested. So this will establish a system of performance-based funding that shares general fund savings with county probation departments when they demonstrate success in reducing the number of adult felony probationers going to state prison. This is a part of our realignment uh, uh, program, which has already been demonstrated with enormous success through SB 678. I'd ask for your I vote. Members, is there debate or discussion? Is there debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Members, could we call the chambers to order so that the secretary can call the roll? One moment, Mr. Secretary. Members? Secretary, please call the roll. Alquist? Aye. Aye. Anderson? No. no. Berryhill? No. no. Blakesley? No. no. Calderon? Aye. Aye. Canella? No, Corbett. Aye, Correa. De Leon. Aye, Desaigne. Aye, Dutton. No, Emerson. No, Evans. Aye, Fuller. No, Gaines. No, Hancock. Aye, Herman. Hernandez. Aye, Huff. No, Kehoe. Aye, Lamalfa. No, Leno. Aye, Ted Lou. I Carol Lou, I Lowenthal, I Negretta McLeod, I Padilla, I Pavley, I Price, Rubio, I Runner, 
No. Samidian? Aye. Steinberg? Aye. Strickland? No. Vargas? Aye. Walters? No. Wolk? Aye. Wright? Aye. Wyland? No. Ye. Ye. Aye. Harmon? No. Please call the absent members. Correa? Price? Price? Aye. Ayes 24, noes 15, the amendments are concurred in. Senator Steinberg. Thank you. Members, we have four items which have come to the Senate this evening from the Assembly for concurrence. Three of those items have been acted on and the amendments have been concurred in. One of those items remains on call. There were four items scheduled to begin in the Senate this evening. Three of those items have seen action this evening and have been sent to the Assembly. One of them has not yet arrived in the Senate. We're waiting on the paperwork. That leaves us with one item that is set to originate here in the Senate, an AB for which we as yet have no paperwork. And that leaves one item which awaits a final vote of the Senate. That is an SB here in the Senate for concurrence.
Senator Steinberg, for what purpose do you rise, sir? Members, if we could call the Senate back to order. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, there is one bill uh, left for consideration, and that is the education trailer bill. There is still some work being done on that bill. We estimate that by the time it is back from legislative council and mocked up, it'll be about nine o'clock, about nine o'clock. So we'll call an hour recess, ask members to stay in the building. Sergeants, and uh, of course there is one small bill on call, the budget bill, be back at nine o'clock, thank you. Members, the Senate stands in recess until 9 p.m.